The Eastern Conference Finals start tonight with Game 1 between the Boston Celtics and the Miami Heat in Miami. Uh, the Celtics did win the regular season series two games to one. The Heat won the last game in March. Um, I don't know how much of a how much of a difference that's going to make because the playoffs are just a whole other beast. And as we've seen, both teams have kind of stepped it up a bit um, in the playoffs. Now, I've seen a lot of people kind of um, taking away from, from what the Heat have done so far in particular, uh, basically pointing out that they've had um, an easier path to get to the conference finals. Uh, they beat the Hawks in the first round, beat a Philly team that was just imploding <laughs> on itself in the second round, and now they're going to get a real test in the form of the Boston Celtics, or at least that's the narrative I keep hearing. And for the Celtics, it's, you know, round one, they take out Durant and the Nets. Round two, they take out Giannis and the defending champs. Like, they are, are I believe, the betting favorite. Um, I want to say it was, like, plus 175 for the Heat, minus 175 or so for the Celtics. So they're, they're a slight favorite here. And I think that's probably right. But at the same time, like, that, like, slight underdog kind of counted out. Like, that's the perfect place for the Heat. Like, they love being there. So, obviously, there's a lot of on-court matchups that are going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see... Um, Jimmy Butler and Jason Tatum, what's going on there? Um, I would assume they're both going to guard each other, and Jimmy Butler loves to take um, assignments like that personally and basically set out to be like, oh, you think he's better? Let me show you. Uh, that's for better or worse, too. We've seen that go terribly in the past for him on different teams. Um, but the lasting image we have right now of Jimmy Butler is walking back to the locker room after eliminating the 76ers screaming you chose Tobias Harris over me so something tells me he's gonna be in in prime petty form here uh, which is great it's must see TV really um, and it's gonna be interesting to see that it'll be interesting to see you know how Boston tries to prevent um, kind of just the multi-head attack of Miami specifically if Robert Williams can't play which as I'm recording this uh, I have not heard anything about his status for this series uh, but if, if he can't go, then Boston's going to have a hard time containing Bam out of bio. Because even though, you know, Joel Embiid and Bam uh, went at it and Embiid had um, a couple really strong games against out of bio, the, he just presents such a weird matchup nightmare when they put him at the five that I don't know who on Boston outside of uh, Robert Williams can really stand a chance there. He's, I believe, Bam out of bio is like 6'9, 6'10. Um, super athletic, super good handle. He's able to create and pass out of the post and, and create from that five position. And that's part of what keeps Miami's offense so open and spaced and free-flowing. And it'll be really interesting to see because like Boston can't put a standard center like Tice or Al Horford on Bam because it's just going to be a mismatch and he's just going to exploit the mismatch every time down. So I don't know if this is going to be something where they start to ask, you know, their wings to guard up or if, if Robert Williams can come back um, as well. We're going to have to see who Miami decides to roll with. They have all of these players. They gave Duncan Robinson $90 million this offseason to then only play him in garbage time in like two of the games against the 76ers. He was completely out of the rotation in favor of undrafted guys like Gabe Vincent and Max Struess. So... If Miami continues doing that, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, we do already know that Kyle Lowry will be out for game one uh, with lingering um, hamstring issues, which kind of a good thing because they really, Miami really took off in those last couple games after um, Lowry was ruled out because as he tried to play through it, he was more of like a hindrance. So to see him, you know, on the bench, kind of coaching up the guys, contributing that way is probably better suited for him until he's 100%. But it's going to be interesting to see how those undrafted guys continue to go. But the, the heat, it's just death by a thousand cuts because they have such a deep rotation. Like, I haven't even talked about Victor Oladipo, P.J. Tucker, any of those. Tyler Hero, the sixth man of the year. So Boston is going to have a lot of, of heads to cut off, basically, here. They're going to have to really... Um, pick and choose who they want to limit, who they want to let get theirs. And on the flip side, uh, Miami is going to have to really figure out if they can um, contain Jason Tatum, who has seemingly uh, stepped up as a two-way player 
just this playoffs really he's taking it up a notch um guys like you know grant williams Derek white those dudes who were just raining threes peyton pritchard in game seven against milwaukee it's gonna be interesting to see if that can keep up because i'm betting the heat will have a similar strategy which is we'll let these guys beat us if they can and that makes me think this is this is gonna be like a super defensive series like i hate saying it's gonna be a throwback but like legitimately you could tell me that like two or three of these games are going to end in like the mid 80s the 90s or even lower and i would completely believe that because i think this series will be won on defensive adjustments on either side and that's what i'm really most excited to see is i'm excited to see coach spolstra uh go up against um ime Yadoka, first year coach who has like i said come up with masterful adjustments and game plans to stop kevin durant kyrie irving Giannis Antetokounmpo, um, and so if he can keep that going, and if they can limit this Heat team, which has been such a well-oiled machine, it's going to be pretty, it's going to be pretty impressive. Um, for me, really, I don't know um, which way I'm leaning. I think this is a seven-game series, no matter what. Um, I'm inclined to pick the Heat, um, just slightly, but only because, and someone was saying, you know, they're, they've had such a, a cakewalk, to the Eastern Conference Finals. They haven't been tested. Well, they were the number one seed in the East. Like, that's what you get when you're the number one seed. And they did that, you know, with an ever-changing rotation, with dudes coming in and out of the lineup with injuries. They they more than, than proved that they were a deep, well-coached, well-disciplined team that could win in multiple ways. And so that's kind of where I'm at, is I'm thinking the Heat, they can win those shootouts. They can hit tons of threes with their guys if they have, you know... Duncan Robinson going, Tyler Hero going, Struess and Vincent, which is insane to say. Even P.J. Tucker can come in and play some hard defense and be that 3 and D guy, hit those open corner threes. So Miami definitely has the means to win those games, but Boston does too. So I don't. it's tough because I think Boston may be the better team on paper, but I give like a slight edge to the Heat just because the Heat have that slight edge to them. Like, they, they definitely have that, that heat culture, which is basically just, like, an excuse to be jerks to everyone else. Um, they have that. And, like, Boston has had this edge since the new year, since 2022 started. But it's just, you know, we'll see. And I'm, I'm kind of just grasping at straws here to, to make my, my case. Um, the truth is I'm really just expecting a great seven-game series where every game is strong and competitive. I don't think this is going to be a series where um, one team is blowing out the other one multiple times. I think this is just going to be a really back-and-forth, hard-fought series. I, I really hope that this is like that Buck series was, where it ends, and whoever wins, we can just be like, man, that was a good series. A good team beat a good team. Hats off to everyone. There's no injuries. There's no chicanery. There's no ref drama. There's none of that. Um, I'm really just hoping that it's a good, evenly matched series like it should be. And really, like I said, that everyone stays healthy, that everything goes goes smoothly as far as outside controversies. I just want to see these two teams play because these absolutely were the right two teams to be left standing to get to the finals. So I am I'm really excited to see what happens because I think both of these teams have leveled up in the playoffs. They've They've shown something that the other Eastern Conference teams just didn't. And it's going to be awesome. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, we'll see what happens. Who knows? Maybe I'll come on tomorrow and be like, well, the Heat lost by 30. Um, hopefully not, but we'll see. Uh, drop your Eastern Conference Finals predictions in the comments. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, we'll be back Wednesday morning with a preview of the Western Conference Finals. Maybe a small recap of the Game 1 for the Eastern Conference, depending on how it goes. We'll see. But uh, stay tuned to that. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, enjoy, enjoy the games tonight.